Due to mass bee mortality rates worldwide, many people are taking up hobby beekeeping, trying to do their part to help the environment. Getting started with bees focuses on how to keep them legally, safely and responsibly. It's not about how to build a bee super base or lid. Keeping European honeybees is nothing like keeping stingless bees. There are safety considerations you need to be aware of for both yourself, your family and your neighbours. In a hive, there could be anywhere from 10 to 50,000 bees, and each one of those worker bees can sting. Are you aware of the costs involved in beekeeping? Keeping bees is a very equipment heavy activity, and we all know that as your equipment requirements increases, so does purchase and maintenance costs. Biosecurity is probably the biggest issue that is currently affecting the honeybee industry. As a beekeeper, you need to make sure that you aren't breaking your biosecurity obligation by unknowingly spreading diseases or pests. You are also required to be registered. So, when getting started with honeybees, it's important to manage your time. Depending on the season in your area, your bees may need quite a bit of work quite often. Keeping honeybees is not about getting a hive and putting it in your backyard and expecting honey. You've got to take care of the bees for them to take care of you. Owning beehives is one thing, but working beehives is something entirely different. Knowing what to do and how to do it efficiently can take a lot of experience. Without practice, hobby beekeepers can be inefficient when they inspect their hive. And that inefficiency can be detrimental to the survival of the colony. Working the hive based on what you have found is the key to success. Working bees correctly simply leads to healthy, happy colonies. A hive of bees is a single unit made up of tens of thousands of little parts that work together cohesively to create what we call a super organism. This series is about understanding those smaller parts and how the beekeepers interaction or lack thereof with those smaller parts affects the entire colony. In colony management, beekeepers need to understand what goes on in every part of their hive. Everything has its place, from a frame of eggs to a frame of honey and everything in between. It can be very easy for an unknowing beekeeper to accidentally disrupt the rhythm inside a colony by moving one of those components incorrectly. The overall strength of a hive is the sum total of all those tiny components inside it. And the result of that depends on how it is worked by the beekeeper. Honey bees are vulnerable now more than ever to an range of pests, parasites, bacteria and viruses. And unfortunately, some of these are spread by uneducated beekeepers. Some bee diseases are so serious that the infected material is considered restricted biosecurity matter. This means that by law, the bees must be killed by the beekeeper and all infected equipment must be either destroyed by fire or sterilized using prescribed sterilization methods. These supers here have been sterilised using gamma irradiation. This frame of honey, once extracted, is now called a sticky. 
An infected sticky looks exactly the same as one that's not infected. A sticky that is infected looks no different to one that has been sterilized. Ignorance is not an excuse when it comes to your biosecurity obligation. The management of your queen bee is second only to disease and pest control. If you are not able to manage your queen's performance, records or lifespan, you will struggle to achieve your beekeeping goals, no matter how big or small. In this five frame nuke, the beekeeper has a 20% chance of injuring or killing their queen, if the first frame is removed incorrectly. Do you know what your options are if you kill your queen? It's not as simple as buying a new queen and chucking her in. Your queen is the heart of your hive. You only have one, and if you want things to run smoothly, you must take care of her. Beekeepers only see nukes as a means to an end. Running nukes all year round has many benefits. Nucleus hives have been recorded as far back as 1865. We advocate running permanent nukes all year round. Doing this gives us a constant supply of queens, drawn combs and the ability to boost a honey production hive at a moment's notice. Of course, running multiple nucleus hives permanently requires your continued attention. If worked properly though, they will reward you in many ways. Here I have enough components to make 100 full depth frames. By the time that they are wired, assembled and wax foundation is fitted, they'll be worth about $6 per frame. That's $600 in materials already. Have a think about how far we'd get with $600 worth of frames. Using 10 frame equipment, you need 28 frames per triple honey hive. So 100 frames will fill roughly 11 supers, enough for only three honey hives and two spares. It's designed to inform you as much as possible about equipment, from basic protective gear, right through to customised lifting gear used to help making beekeeper easier for everyone. If you get to the point where you have honey to extract, then well done, you've done something right. But you should always ask yourself, how much honey did you leave for your bees? The size and complexity of the equipment in your honey room depends entirely on the scale of your beekeeping operation. Do you really need to spend tens of thousands of dollars on an automatic uncapping line, horizontal extractor and a honey pump? Or will a ladle and a bucket do the job just fine? You need to be careful not to over invest in the equipment in your honey room. Remember, your bees need to be in great shape for you to be able to get honey to harvest. Series 8 is designed to help you get your honey out of the frames and into jars or drums, like this one here, as quickly and efficiently as possible. So, hey Alan, do you want this full drum of honeymoon? Yes, for sure, mate. Okay. Oh. Oh! Didn't you get your weedies for breakfast this morning? <laughs> Did you give me a hand? Do you want a hand? Bloody hell. Alright. Uh, uh, oh, fuck oh, at that. 